Hello. So, in the first video, I looked at the entry's recurring themes, and in the second video, I analysed the runner-ups. Now, in this one, I'm finally going to announce the actual winner of The Mask. <laughs> This entry is the clear winner in my book, and going on the thumbs up it received, you lot agreed with me. So, without further ado, the winning entry is... Alexander Robert Newby, and he writes... My penis fell off in the bath, and I couldn't find the plug. Luckily, I salvaged my dismembered member before it was lost down the drain, only to find that I had no idea how to reattach it. In finally managing to do so, I realised, to my dismay, it wasn't mine. Discarding it, I began to search for my true genitalia. The bath was now full of various willies, not one of them belonging to me. I became frantic, sifting through cock upon cock down the plug hole until none were left, and I was left castrated, like Ken. The Barbie doll, I think he means. This might seem like a silly pick, and I suppose it is in a sense, but there's actually a lot going on here. First off, we've got a staggering amount of faulty logic at play. At no point does the dreaming mind wonder how on earth the penis could have just fallen off like that. And at no point does the dreaming mind wonder why there are so many other penises lingering in the bath drain. The dreaming mind, like so many other dreaming minds from night to night, never stops to rationalise the absurdities it's experiencing. This obliviousness can be disheartening for some, especially those who are diligently striving towards maintaining a more lucid lifestyle, but it is perfectly natural, this is just the way the mind works on default whilst dreaming. After all, the usual part of the mind that's used for logic and rationalisation is switched off during dreaming. Because of this, we tend to accept the strangest of scenarios as reasonable and acceptable. The only way to turn that part of the mind back on is to become lucid. And in fact, that is often the way we become lucid. We say, this thing I'm experiencing is absurd. This makes no sense. I must be dreaming. But even whilst lucid, that rational, uh, logical part of the mind can continue to stay switched off depending on how far down the lucid layer ladder you've gone. Anyway, back to this dream. So another point of interest is the rich sexual symbolism. Of course, as always, there are many possible interpretations of this symbolism. But from my perspective, the key to unlocking its message lies in Alex's acknowledgement that he became frantic. Anything that induces such a heightened state of panic is usually tied into deep-rooted fears and insecurities. Now, what exactly those fears and insecurities are is not my place to say. I could guess at them, but what's the point? I don't know Alex like Alex knows Alex, so Alex is the one that should join the dots and complete this interpretation. Which segues me into an important point I want to raise. Anyone that claims that they can objectively interpret your subjective dreaming experiences is deluding themselves, or in the worst case scenarios, outright lying to you, i.e. They're a bloody charlatan. Only the dreamer can fully break down their own dreams. An outside observer like me can merely form generalised interpretations and make educated guesses at the subjective symbolism, but nothing more. And that's exactly what I've been doing throughout these last three videos, looking at the general ideas behind why themes pop up, but never daring to delve into personal, definitive interpretations. The very thought of doing so is just audacious in my opinion. But yet, so many people look to others to interpret their dreams for them, and I think that's sad. It really is. Empower yourself. You know the interpretation better than anyone else. 
I mean, it's okay for people to maybe look over a dream and give their input, but to just come along and say, this means this, and there's no other way of looking at it, as in dogma, you know, that's bullshit. So anyway, let's go back to the dream one last time and look at the abstract absurdity going on in it. Why does the dreaming mind create such wild, unbelievable scenarios such as this one? Well, like I said previously, one of the reasons is because the logical part of the mind is switched off, but it is more than that. Another possible reason is that the dreaming mind is always in subtle communication with the other levels of the mind whilst dreaming. It's going back and forth with the conscious level, the subconscious level, the superconscious level. And because of this, it's receiving all sorts of different stimuli. The conscious mind sends logical signals whilst the subconscious mind sends symbolic signals. All the while, the superconscious mind is orchestrating the grander plot behind the scenes. It mashes together all these seemingly conflicting signals and weaves together a script of sorts. Within this script usually lays direction and an overall goal, something that the superconscious mind wants to achieve, but due to the numerous sources it draws upon, the script makes little sense to our conscious mind upon awakening. It's like getting three writers together and giving them all the same general theme to write about. Only thing is, all three writers come from different schools of thought. They have different styles of writing, so inevitably they all come up with something different. Once they're finished, the head writer comes in and creates one final script from elements of the original three. On one level, the final script makes perfect sense. It's almost bordering on genius. But on another level, it's just a garbled, nonsensical mess. What I'm trying to get at here is the coherence of the script will vary depending on what level of the mind is observing it. After all, Alex didn't question the absurd scenario once. Not once. Why? because he was experiencing it through the dreaming mind. But upon waking up and seeing it through a shifted perspective, suddenly the absurdity um, becomes noticeable. In other words, everything in life, especially your dreaming life, is about perspective. But look, disregarding all of that, simply put, I just like this dream, it raised a smile, it made me chuckle. And really, there's no better reason than that. So, thanks for sharing, Alex. Get in contact with me, and I will send you this. It's not even that good. You're not going to enjoy it, I don't think, but <laughs> keep an open mind. Before I go, make sure to check out the new tune from Reese Huntley, the guy that produces the music for these videos. It's rather a strange little thing, including voice samples from my videos interspersed throughout. Why he'd do this is beyond me, but he seems to like it, so <laughs> go check it out. Here's the link, and it will also be in the description box below. So that's it, I guess. See you later.